Well, hello, congregation, family and friends. Bereans, we are back. I want to wish you a happy and blessed new year. If you're watching this live, it is January 1st, 2020, our very first broadcast of the new year. We are very grateful to be back. We've been off the air for about a month with live recordings. And I'll tell you, um, I had a lot of time to think about things over the past 30 days. I had a lot of time to spend with God, uh, stepping away from some of the ministry things. A lot had been happening. The devil had been relentlessly attacking this ministry, attacking me personally, uh, certainly obliterated our financial support. Uh, our website went down and we don't have a new one back up yet. So the devil did his best to try to take us out as he always does when you do things for God. The devil would like nothing better than to obliterate all of the ministries, anyone who's preaching the true word of God, because that's what the devil does. He purports, he sends out lies and deceptions. And so we took a break. I took a break off of the air. It was self-imposed. It was something that I needed to do to uh, regenerate some thoughts and to also spend time with God and seek his will. I do have his will. And I do have some things that he wants me to do here in the new year. Some things I'm going to be pursuing. Some of them I've already shared with you privately. Some things I can't put out here publicly just yet. But I want to thank all of you. Before I give you the message today, and it'll be a short message, an encouragement, I'm sure. But I want to thank all of you that stood by us, that stood by us with your prayers and with your thoughts and with your encouragement and with your fellowship, particularly through the past 30 days. Mm -hmm. It has not been easy. But I thank you for the support. We felt them. We felt all of your prayers. We felt all of your support. And, and for those that continue to support us financially through that rough time, we especially thank you. We thank all of you over the past year of 2019 that supported us in any way, whether it was financial, whether it was through your prayers, through your encouragement, through your fellowship, just sending us a positive thought, just sending us a, a virtual hug. However you did that, we're grateful for all of you. But we're here. We didn't leave totally like Satan would have liked. We're here. So a happy and blessed new year to all of you. 2020, we're going to keep pushing the gospel. We're going to keep sharing it in as many ways as we can, regardless of what the devil says. Because the devil is a liar, and he's the father of lies, and he's already defeated. And so I just wanted to say before I brought this message, thank you. A very humble, a very sincere, and a very grateful thank you to all of you. Now, you'll notice the, uh, the title I put up here. It says New Day Resolutions. It doesn't quite sound right, does it? Are you a person that makes New Year's resolutions? Did you make some last night on New Year's Eve? Perhaps you made some this morning. Perhaps you're a person that each year you compile a little list of the things that you would like to do. Well, let me just share a few thoughts and show you a couple of scriptures for all of us to consider when it comes to New Year's resolutions. Now, inherently, let me just say up front that I do not believe there's anything necessarily bad about making New Year's resolutions. The problem is what we do to ourselves to try to achieve them, and I'll get to that in a moment. First of all, we have to understand what does the word resolution mean? It means to resolve. It means to make a firm decision to either do something or not do something. That's what resolution means. It means you are firm about doing something or not doing something. So when you make a resolution, in a way, you're almost making a vow. Now, we want to be careful with that, and I'm going to show you what the difference is. And as always, I want you to consider this and do your study for yourself. We want to be faithful Bereans at all times. Those of you who've watched me for the last couple of years know that I'm always talking about being a Berean, Acts 17, 11. So anything that you hear, you want to study for yourself and make sure what you're hearing is the truth. So let me give you a little background about myself. 
Years ago, I stopped making New Year's resolutions, but I did at one time. Oh, I did. I would sit down every New Year's Eve or maybe New Year's morning, and I would make a list of things that I was going to do or not do for that year. And I, I had firm resolve, like most of us, we're going to go into this knowing what we want to do. And my list might be something like, I'm going to be more responsible with my money. I'm going to go to church more often. I'm going to stop using bad language. I'm going to stop staying up late so that I'm late for work in the morning. Things like that. And we would go through our lives, and I'm sure you make similar lists. I want to lose 20 pounds this year. Uh, I want to find a better job. And we all start out with the good intentions. We all start out saying, this is a good, a positive list. I'm going to quit smoking this year. I'm going to stop doing drugs this year or, or, or share, get away from alcohol or whatever the case may be. That was your list. And you were going to stick to your list. Now, there's nothing wrong with that because if those lists were meant to improve your life, or to change some things, or to break some bad habits. There's nothing wrong with doing that. The problem is this, and you have found this out. I know you have, because I have also. We start out with the best of intentions. And so here it is, January 1st, and maybe you've decided to exercise more. And so you hit the gym this morning, or you decided to try to quit smoking, and instead of doing a cold turkey, you're now cutting down the number of cigarettes. Or you decided that you don't want to drink as much, or whatever your situation is. You've started to enact that. By next week, you may still have firm resolve. By the week after, you may find that you're smoking just as much, or you're not losing the weight you thought, or you're still not taking good care of your money, or you're still not paying first fruits to the church. Whatever your situation is now, your resolve is starting to weaken a little bit. Why? Because you put all of that pressure on yourself simply because the calendar said January 1st and you're making New Year's resolutions. I don't know where the concept of New Year's resolutions came from, but I got caught up in it for many, many years. And so I would look at my list and that by the end of January, some of those resolutions were already gone. I, I felt defeated. I couldn't do it. And so what did I do in my head? I'll just make that resolution for next year. And so a lot of those resolutions went on the same list year after year after year and never got accomplished. Why is that? Because we're not built to do it that way. And I'm going to show you in scripture that God gives us a formula. He gives us warnings, but he gives us a formula also on how he renews things every day. And this is why I'm calling this message a new day revelation. A resolution. Here's what I learned over the years. Instead of waiting for January 1st to make my resolutions, no, I make what I call New Day's resolutions. Each day when I wake up, I resolve to do certain things. Each day when I wake up, and you may notice if you, if you watch some of my older videos and now, I've lost uh, quite a bit of weight over the past year. I'm praising God for that. I'm taking no credit for that. But here's here's my point. Had I just made it a New Year's resolution and I didn't see the weight loss that I wanted or was hoping for, I would have given up and went back to my old eating habits. That's just human nature. I would have felt defeated and I would have gave up. But because every morning when I woke up, I resolved and I made a promise to myself that I would stick with the eating plan. And then I started seeing results every day, every month. And I started seeing the, the realization that instead of making occasional resolutions, I had to stay with it every single day. Now, I've proved that to myself years ago that these New Day resolutions help. And it helped me in my Christian walk with Jesus. It helped me uh, with my music career when I, back when I was in the music business. And I made a, a resolution in my own mind that if God gave me another day, that I was going to get up and live that day to the best of my ability, to the glory of God, knowing that I was a sinner, knowing that sometimes I would fail. But if I just live by this list, you see, and I started failing after two or three weeks, I'd crumble up the list and just get rid of it. But if I renew them every morning, every day, that gives me added incentive every single day to go and do 
what I have vowed to do, what I have promised to do, and what I have resolved to do. That's how I found out. And that's what I'm suggesting to you, that instead of putting all this pressure on yourself to do New Year's resolutions, and in a month from now, when you don't see the weight loss, when you haven't stopped drinking, when you still haven't gone to church yet, and you start making excuses for yourself. I just don't have any willpower. I guess I just can't do it. I'll wait till next year. Next year may not come. You may not be here next year. What are you waiting for? And so I found a formula that works. And I found it right in scripture. Now, what I'm going to show you is not going to say exactly to make New Day resolutions, but I think the application will be there. The first thing I want to show you before I show you how God does it, if you haven't read the book of Numbers in a while, and, and church family, I don't know if we've read through the book of Numbers lately, but if we haven't, we should make that a point to read that. But if you go to Numbers chapter 30, and I'm not going to read all of it, I just want to read you a couple verses here. In Numbers chapter 30, we have what's called the Law of Vows, V-O-W-S. And there's a series of vows that you can and cannot make and should and should not make because you're accountable to God. So let me explain to you what the difference is. A resolution, as I said, is a firm decision to do something. Now, you decide you want to lose weight. Okay, you resolve to do that. That has to do with your personal thing. When you start crossing over into things like, I'm going to get back to church. I'm going to start reading my Bible more. I'm going to start giving first fruits and pay God the first fruits of my all of my labor and so on. Now you are crossing over into godly things, into spiritual things. And now it's not just resolving for yourself. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to stop smoking. I'm going to be a better driver. You are now almost promising God. You're almost making a vow, a resolution to God that I'm going to go to church. I'm going to read your word. I'm going to start honoring you, God, with my first fruits. Now it's more than just a resolution. Now you have crossed over, I believe, into a vow territory because now you're involving God. It's one thing to say I'm going to lose weight. It's another thing to say, God, I'm going to find a church. I'm going to start worshiping you. When you start crossing over, now you're in the land of vows. Now, the Bible has a lot to say about vows, and maybe one day we'll do a Bible study on that. There's a lot of passages that talk about that. But I just want to give you one thing to think about if you are making these kind of resolutions or these kind of vows to God. It says here, Numbers chapter 30, verse 1. Then Moses spoke to the heads of the tribes of the sons of Israel. They were the leaders of the 12 tribes. This is the word which the Lord has commanded. If a man makes a vow to the Lord or takes an oath, an oath to bind himself with a binding obligation, he shall not violate his word. He shall do according to all that proceeds out of his mouth. Did you hear that? We make a vow to God, and God expects us to hold to that vow. You tell God you're going to do something, and that is a solemn vow between you and God. You are making a binding obligation according to the Scripture. According to the Scripture, see, we would be better off not doing that. And the Bible does talk about that. Don't make a vow if you can't pay it. Don't say something you're not going to do. This has to do with spiritual things. I am not talking about if you say, I want to lose 20 pounds this year, and you wind up not losing 20 pounds. That is not a spiritual resolution. Do you see the difference? But when you cross over and you say, God, I'm going to give you first fruits, or I'm going to promise to read your word more. I want to get to know you more. Now you've invoked God. Now you've brought God into it. You're making a resolution or a vow to God. It's different. It's a whole different thing. And so without getting into it too deep, I want you to consider what Moses said here in Numbers 30. If a man, and it applies to a woman also, if a man makes a vow to the Lord or you take an oath to yourself with a binding obligation, Lord, I'm going to be going to church. Lord, I'm going to read my Bible every day. You've invoked God. You've brought God into your resolution. You've brought him into the conversation. It says you shall not violate the word which according to all proceeds out of your mouth. Don't say something that you don't mean. Don't resolve to do something, especially when it concerns God, that you don't mean. 
If you don't mean to read your Bible every day, if you don't mean to make an effort to go to church, if you don't mean to pay your first fruits or whatever the situation is, don't say it. Don't do it. And see, now that plays into what I was talking about with New Year's resolutions. You may set out and say, you know, it's a new year, it's 2020, and I haven't been a, a real good church goer. I'm going to find a church this year. Okay, so you set a goal for that. But after a few weeks, that resolution wears off. and You don't feel that call maybe to go to church anymore. Or money gets a little tight, and instead of paying God your first fruits, you spend all of it and you give God nothing. Do you think God is pleased with that? Do you think he would hold us accountable for that? Because we've invoked a resolution or a vow to God that he clearly said, don't let it come out of your lips if you're not going to do it. Better that you not make a vow at all. So now I'm going to show you what I found in scripture of how God deals with this. And again, it's not exactly, you're not going to find the word resolution in here. But I want you to turn to Lamentations chapter 3, and I want to read a couple of very familiar verses to you. I want to show you how this applies and how I found out how this applies to my life. In Lamentations 3, I want you to listen to these verses, beginning in verse 22 of Lamentations 3. The Lord's loving kindness indeed never cease, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. You see? Can you see where I'm going with that? The Lord's loving kindness indeed never ceases. It's there every day, his loving kindness. His compassions never fail. They're there every day. God did not just make any kind of a list on January 1st or the new year and said, I'm going to be compassionate just for this amount of time, but if I get tired then I'm just going to stop doing that. No, every single morning, and here's what jumped out at me. Verse 23, they are new every morning. You think about it. You woke up this morning, God's loving kindness was there. His compassion was there. His love was there. The sacrifice that Jesus made for us on Calvary is there. It's still there. They never cease. You see, each and every morning, God renews them. New day resolutions, new day vows, not new years, new day. God, every morning, when I woke up this morning, whether I intellectually realized it or not, God's compassion was in my life, his loving kindness was in my life, his forgiveness was in my life, because it says they are new every morning. God renews them every morning. And so I started thinking about that, and I said, you know what? That's the formula. Instead of being frustrated and defeated, and going down and crumbling my to-do list and my resolutions, and I'll just do them next year and I'll throw them away. I do them every morning. I make them every morning. I make a commitment or a resolution to myself that I'm going to do certain things that day to the glory of God. Now, don't get me wrong. I sin plenty. I sin plenty. And I need to be forgiven over and over by God because I'm far far from perfect. But what I discovered was that I can, just like God renews his every morning, I can renew my resolution every morning. And that's how, over the past 12 months, I've been able to lose 35 pounds. I'm not boasting. It's simply because I got up and I made a decision every morning that I was going to stay with that eating plan because I saw the results. Now imagine if I had just done this on January 1st and didn't see the results I was hoping for by January 20th. I wouldn't be on the, the, the diet or the eating plan anymore. I would be a lot less healthier than I am now. But because I renew them every morning, God showed me the formula. He's showing us the formula. He's showing you the formula today. So if you're watching this live or you're catching this on a replay, January 1st, and you made some New Year's resolutions, I want you to look through those resolutions. And instead of just saying uh, in a couple of weeks, if they don't work out, I'll just try again. Make them new every morning. Every day when you get up and you're saying your morning prayers, every day when you get your day started, you look at that list and you say, God, this is what I committed to. I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm going to ask for your help and your guidance because your loving kindness, your compassion, your forgiveness, your love for me is new every morning. 
every day that you give me, I know that you're here with me. Every day, I know that you love me, that you have compassion, that you have shown forgiveness to me. Every day, because the Bible says they're new every morning. And then, this, then Jeremiah says, great is thy faithfulness, which just so happens to be my all-time favorite hymn. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. You are great in your faithfulness because it never fails. It never goes away. It says it never ceases. They're there every morning. And that is the formula that I want to leave you with. So those of you who get caught up in New Year's resolutions, hey, if it works for you, I'm not telling you to abandon it, if it works for you. It didn't work for me. It never accomplished anything for me. I only wound up more and more frustrated. And so if it works for you to try new day resolutions, then let me encourage you to do that. Let's be careful when we're making our resolutions, when we're talking about those things in the secular world and those things that we're making a vow or a promise or a resolution to God. God is going to hold us. Jesus said every idle word is going to be held against us. Everything we say, if you say something and you don't mean it, that is an idle word. If you promise and you break your promise or you break your vow, that is an idle word. The Bible says that God is going to hold that against us. I don't want to be held against. I would rather say every morning, Lord, I'm, I'm still a sinner saved by grace. You've given me another day. I'm going to do my very best to live for you today, knowing already that I'm going to fail at some point. And when Crystal and I, we pray together. One of the things that I pray about is, Lord, forgive us our sins, those that we know about and those that we don't know about, those that we're aware of and those that we're not even aware that we committed. That covers all of them. And that's what we do. That's what I do. That's how I've learned to hold to my resolutions. And if I make a vow to God to give first fruits, because um, I do like to give, you know, I do like to let you know who I am and let you get to know me on here. We pay first fruits of every dollar of income we get, not boasting. That's a vow, that is a resolution, that is a promise, that is something that we do as a family. So before we pay any other bills, before we do anything else, God gets his first fruits first. And you know what? We have seen tremendous blessing as a result of that. And the Bible does talk about that. Maybe we'll do a Bible study on, on first fruits and tithing and how that works. You give to God first, and he will give back to you in abundance. That's how it works. And so that's what we do. But that is a vow you see I made before God. Now, if I was just taking this human humanly without renewing this every day, and a nice juicy paycheck came in, and I know that we need something for the house. How tempted would I be to go and take that money and just go buy something for us and not give God anything? I couldn't sleep at night if I did that, only because I trained myself and, and I made that resolution or that vow to God that I was not going to spend a dime until God got his first. And I'll tell you, sometimes we had lean Lean times. Sometimes we had to go without getting things. But in the end, God supplied our needs. In the end, he brought us all through 2019, even though this ministry was totally, almost totally wrecked and taken off the air. Even though in our personal life he was attacking. Even though in our financial life he was attacking. And yet God saw us through all of that. Now, would I have been able to hold up to any of that if I was just making New Year's resolutions? No. I have to get up every day. And make sure that I'm going down my list and making sure that the things I promised God or the things I promised my wife or the things I promised the ministry, that I'm going to do them. And the only way that I can do that is realize that while God's compassion and loving kindness is new every morning, so are my vows to be every morning. So is my resolutions to be every morning. Every new day, the resolutions are renewed. And that's what God showed me. And that's all I wanted to share with you today. Consider making new day resolutions, not new year's resolutions. Try it. Try it. Redo your list and decide that every morning those resolutions, if they're important to you, then you'll see them through every single day. You won't get discouraged in a few weeks or in a couple of months when you don't see results because you'll be renewing them every day. That's what I wanted to leave with you today. I pray that 2020 is the most blessed year you have ever had.
for you and your family, for your jobs, whatever, whatever is going on in your life, God can handle it. Whatever trouble you have, God has an answer. Whatever prayer request you have, take it to him. God is there. He wants to please his children. He wants to hear from us. So let's commit ourselves to having new day resolutions. And tomorrow, renew them. And the next day, renew them. And so on, each and every day. Watch what you see, what God does. You will be amazed at what God will do when you put your mind to it and you resolve to do it every day. You will find yourself not getting discouraged, not crumbling up your list and throwing it away. You will stay with it. You will stay with it. And that is my prayer for you, that at the end of this year, 2020, you will see that this formula that God gave us works. And there's no other way to handle resolutions and vows than God's way. Remember, the Bible is true. The, uh, the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. The Bible is true. What he says tr is true and it always works because God said it. I pray that this message has helped you. If it has, please feel free to share it. Um, Isaiah 55, 11 says what? God's word will not return void. It will reach all those people he intends it to reach. So if it reached you, if this ministered to you today, if this meant something, if, if you understand what God was saying here, then please share it with other people because here we are at the beginning of a new year and people need to hear this message so they're not discouraged, so they don't give up hope in a month or so when their resolutions aren't coming to pass. Don't let that happen. Share this with everyone that you think needs to hear it because God's word does not return void. It hit somebody today. Somebody heard this today. Somebody needed this message today other than me. I know that because God's word goes out and it reaches those he intends it to reach. Also, you always hear me say it. Be a Berean, Acts 17, 11. The Bereans were more noble than others. They weren't smarter or greater they were more noble. They listened to the Apostle Paul preach to them. And then the Bible says, they didn't stop there. They searched the scriptures how often? Daily, daily. They got into the Bible every day to make sure what they were hearing was true. I encourage you to do the same thing. Take the scripture references that I gave you. Do your own Bible study. Get into the word. See what God has to say. The only way we can know absolute truth is to study the Bible absolutely. The only way we can do that is to stay in the word and see what God has to say. Let me encourage you, be a Berean. Start right now, January 1st, 2020. Be a Berean this year, Acts 1711. Lastly, please continue praying for our ministry. We could always use your prayers, and we need your prayers to stay uplifted, to stay on the front lines for Jesus. We are not going anywhere. We are not backing down. We're going to do exactly what God has called me to do and called this ministry to do. Now, we don't have a website where we had where you could get, but if you are led, if God leads you to support us financially, we sure could use it. Please get in touch with me on any of these platforms. Get in touch with me privately, and I can show you a couple of ways how you can help us financially. And if you don't or you're not convicted of that, that's okay. You come on back for every single broadcast. I want to be able to learn the Bible with you, to minister to you, and that we can lift up the Lord together through these studies and these various broadcasts. Please keep us in prayer as we'll keep you in prayer. Have a blessed 2020. Thanks for joining me.